Hey guys, welcome to the Silver Report Uncut. If you haven't, be sure to follow our Telegram channel. It's t.me forward slash Silver Report. I wanted to talk about a big opportunity that a lot of people may not have noticed right now. And there's a perfect market situation going on for this, and it's copper. Now, in 2021, copper had an amazing year. The prices were surging. They were really getting up there. And in fact, there was a copper deficit that was 475,000 tons in 2021. So here's where the interesting point comes in. A lot of analysts, they've been poo-pooing copper. They've been turning a lot of attention away from copper. What they're saying is that because of this huge increase in demand, the huge increase in price, it led to more producers producing more copper. So now they say there's going to be an oversupply in the market, and this could therefore damage the price. But there's another angle to this. That's not the only story going on here. Because in the long term, the demand is going to greatly outpace the supply the way things look. So this is only going to be short-lived at most. It's really not forward-looking. So I wanted to go over some other important points. Commerce Bank's analyst, they noted that the higher copper supply, it was essential in restocking the heavily depleted inventories. They said the stocks in the LME warehouses, they're only slightly above a 16-year low. Those in the SHFE warehouses, they're as low as they were in 2009. Importantly, deficits, they led to heavily depleted inventories. So if there is an oversupply in 2022, it's going to be needed. This was also echoed by EDNF's. He said copper inventories remain critically low and they're offering invaluable pricing support. He brought up how the Shanghai bonded stocks, they fell to multi-year lows this past month, and the LME stocks, they tumbled by 40% in November alone. Tom Price, he's the head of commodity strategy at Liberum, he said the global exchange inventories were down 60% since April, while on the other hand, global scrap flows remain constrained. A recent pullback in China's imports is probably a seasonal event set to reverse in the first quarter of 2022. This is where I actually see maybe a light that a lot of these analysts have not been looking at. China is currently shut down at many places. There's a major problem at their ports. It's a major problem for the world. And all economic activity essentially is being affected by this to some degree. There's also this random cities or regions being shut down from time to time. So when all this comes to an end, there will be a major surge in demand. During the run-up in copper and the financial crisis, we saw they were a major player. They turned to stockpiling copper to have a secure supply. I also wanted to bring up some more points. Eowyn Dinsmore, a research manager of base metals at CRU, quote, growth in electric vehicles and renewable energy will result in copper demand in China and globally in 2022. Citibank wrote in November, decarbonization will drive consumption. Higher prices will be needed to draw in enough copper scrap to meet longer term demand. List recently polled by Focus Economics, they presented diverging views on the price outlook in 2022. The minimum forecast for quarter four 2022 came in at $6,642 per ton, while the maximum forecast was Goldman Sachs, $12,250 per ton, which would be a pretty big increase from here. Bank of America recently said it expects copper demand to hold firm this year, and they only see a surplus in 2023 alone. The bank forecasted the copper prices to average 9,813 per ton during 2022. And for the long-term outlook, that's the most important point. Beyond 2022, those around the industry are mostly upbeat on copper, given the multitude of positive long-term forces that will be increasingly felt toward the end of the decade. There's this clean energy transition. We know all that's going on. For the next three to five years, the general consensus is that copper will be a clear winner of the clean energy investment theme. Analysts at Goldman Sachs, we just brought them up, they're calling copper the new oil. As the metal is a key part of sustainable technologies, Goldman Sachs said, quote, Copper will be crucial in achieving decarbonization and replacing oil with renewable energy resources. And right now, the market is facing a supply crunch that could boost the price by more than 60% within four years. Their analyst, Jeff Curry, he said more copper will be needed to create the new infrastructure systems required for clean energy to replace oil and gas. But there's not been any focus on this. Their team estimates copper demand will therefore significantly increase by up to 8.7 million tons by 2030. Over the past 10 years, greenfield additions to copper reserves have slowed dramatically, with tonnage from new discoveries falling by 80% since 2010. S&P Global estimates that new discoveries averaged 50 million tons annually between 1990 and 2010. And since then, new discoveries have fallen by 80%. York Harbor Metals, what's interesting about this company is it used to have a different name. It was Phoenix Gold Resources. And I'm sure you're familiar with them. They were the gold producer. They were focusing on a project over there in Nevada. 
but now their name is York Harbor Metals, and they have a very big zinc and copper project they're focusing on in Newfoundland, Canada. They have some really big backers. I know that Eric Sprott, he owns around 7% of this company. Eric Sprott, he's a billionaire investor. He's pretty much a phenom in the mining world. He owns just about every successful project there can be, especially projects in this major, major mining district that is full of natural resources. They say the next generation of copper mines will not only have less copper, but sharply declining grades, according to a study by Mining Intelligence. The operating mines currently have an average grade of 0.53%, while copper projects under development have an average grade of 0.39%. Now, what would be a good copper grade? Anything over 100 meters and 1% copper equivalent or better is considered to be high grade. So Sprott has a massive position in this company. The company formerly known as Phoenix Gold, it's the hottest and most attractive commodities inflation hedge stock that's out there. Eric Sprott, he's a billionaire mining tycoon. He's not only the chairman of Kirkland Lake Gold, the most profitable, low-cost, high-grade gold mine in the world for the past decade. He was the founder and financier of some of the best mining stocks of the past generation. Eric Sprott, he bought shares at Canadian 40 cents around $1 million worth. But he just bought millions more this past November. He now owns 7% of the company. He's up over 150% on his position. He could easily cash out with millions of dollars and realize gains. But he's never sold a single share, nor exercised warrants. So not only does he believe York Harbor's drilling results are nothing short of extraordinary, he's also walking the talk. And he just increased his position in November, which tells you he's ultra bullish in this company. In fact, the investors in this company believe so much that York Harbor's drilling results in the past few months are the best in the world, and they truly are. No one else is reporting these high grades of copper and zinc at these strike lengths. Another long-term strategic partner of his, the CEO, Andrew Lee, and seven other close-knit group of investors, 52% of outstanding shares are held by these professional resource legends and tycoons. It cannot get any healthier or tighter, and they're definitely not short of any money or selling anytime soon. This is a stock with whale shareholders with diamond hands who are invested for one reason alone. They want to sell York Harbor Metals within the next 12 to 24 months for a 5 to 10 time to even 20 times its current market cap, judging by the amazing drilling results that they are seeing in many, many, many years. No mining company has seen these types of copper grades. The nearest comparable company has a market cap that is three times bigger. So they are 66% cheaper than their closest peer. To give you an idea of how incredible their project is, Bruce Durham, the recently joined chairman of the company, was in retirement. But a friend showed him the drilling results and he literally said, I am back. Their geologist, Doug Blanchflower, he was out of the game as well and actually got a glimpse of these grades and he went back to the government to get his license reissued and in good standing because he said he must work on this project. The stock is up 323% since June 2021. 172% in the past six months, and 114% just in 2022. In my personal opinion, this company will be the biggest winner for copper in 2022, considering the average mine grades, and we'll get into some details about what their drilling results revealed. We cannot neglect it's also a VMS deposit. They're very rare. So what's the grading at York Harbor? Well, their drill results, they just revealed something quite stunning, actually. So York Harbor Metals, Inc., they are pleased to report these high-grade copper and cobalt values in the diamond drill hole YH2124. The grading was 5.25% copper. And it also had a lot of silver as well. It was 8.97 grams per ton of silver and 0.801 zinc over the drilling length of 29 meters at the company's York Harbor Copper Zinc Project. YH2122 intersected strong zinc and copper values over a 5.26 meter interval they graded at 2.84% copper and 31.9% zinc. There was also the 42 grams per ton of silver. The phase two drilling program and included 29 diamond holes. A chairman, Bruce Durham, he commented on this find, quote, high dollar value, high grade copper mineralization like the intersection in the drill hole YH2124 is very rare. They are important indicators of strong mineralizing fluid systems at work. We know there are numerous indications of copper and zinc mineralizations in the local area, and most remain only partially defined. By proceeding to drill these mineralized areas in detail, 
we will begin to establish a solid understanding of the size, mineralogy, structural controls, and grade distribution within these various areas of the known VMS style mineralization. This is one thing I know. Eric Sprott does not pick losers, and if he does, he certainly does not invest more into the losers because he's not into losing. A big thing he's done recently is that he owned a ton of shares of newfound gold. And if you're a frequent watcher of this program, you're very familiar with them. Their stock increased a whole lot, but now he's become a 31% owner, I'm pretty sure, obviously because it is a winner. So him being a 7% owner in this company is very significant. Him looking at this, in which he says that copper could perform better than gold, regardless of whatever happens in the short term. The entire world is converting over to significantly higher copper demand. The entire world has significantly diminishing copper supply to unbelievable epic heights. And as that moves, you know, individual project that has such high grades is going to be very valuable to a lot of these major mines, a lot of these producers, especially in that area. Now, of course, do your due diligence when researching these companies. If you want to learn more about this company, you can just visit YorkHarborMetals.com. It trades on the TSX Venture under Y-O-R-K and on the over-the-counter market for U.S. investors under Y-O-R-K-F and on the Frankfurt Exchange under 5-D-E-0. Make sure to check the descriptions. I'll leave some links down there so you can learn more about this company, learn more about copper, hopefully. Do your due diligence, but don't neglect these companies. I thank you guys for stopping by and joining us. As always, stay free.